Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite dictator. I have to apologize to all my listeners around the world. I have been extremely busy. So busy, I can't even remember the last time I had a podcast episode. But there has been a lot that has been going on in the world. And personally, I have some good news, if you haven't heard. Two weeks ago, I went viral. And there's a video I shot, not, not that I shot the video, but you know what I mean. I filmed the video and I have gone viral. 6.5 million views and it is still rising as we speak. So that has been taking a lot of my time because every day I receive lots of letters from people from all over the world, which I have to attend to. But with no further ado, I have a special guest. You know, one of the things that people who listen to my podcast criticize me for is, and I think it's this woke culture that we have at the moment, is that I didn't have a woman and I didn't have black woman in my podcast as a guest. So I have decided to find someone that I have known for so many years and she has been busy. We go a long way. At one point, she used to call me uncle. You know, I met Teju Chosen well over 11 years ago because we did a show together called, I can't even remember, not because I suffer from Alzheimer's disease, but it was a combination of poetry and comedy. Uh, and she will remind me uh, the title. Laughter. Uh, yeah, Laughter Bus, something like that. Laughter Bus and the Unrehearsed. And on the rehearsed, you know, she sounds so posh, even though she's Nigerian, you think she's English. Look, I want to introduce you to Teju Chosen. She is a brilliant human being, but not only a brilliant human being, she is a coach, a business coach. Look, business and career coach. Let me tell you some of the things that I, because I got my people to go and research. I didn't want to ask her. I wanted my people to find out information about her on the internet. And if they haven't got this right, they are in trouble. Tell you chosen, ever felt like you are just existing, the perception that your feet are moving, but your life is not. Walking hard, leaving the office late, walking online from home till late, but not anymore. Feel free to contact me by clicking the send email button. That was me many, many years ago. This is Teju's information on the internet living from paycheck to paycheck and every month that money by the end of every four to five weeks i have been through the mill been made redundant even been before a job started struggled to find work whilst having a large mortgage lived on 24p loaf of bread jeez and i came out the other end with a rock solid strategy i told you she is a formidable woman last let's fast forward Today, she is a qualified, client-orientated, career business transformation coach who will help you source, stop making excuses, unblock and shift paradigms to soar even higher. 80% of people in the UK will, will be broke when they retire. I can help you ensure that you quickly secure your place in the top 20%. Want to know how? I can help you audaciously climb out of your comfort zone and overcome the fear of change, rejection, and tomorrow. As well as my expertise in several industries, my coaching qualifications and experience, I have a passion to, to hope, which is help other people evolve, uplift others by helping them see their greatest potential. As a man ticket, so is his Proverbs 23.7. So I will start by working with your mindset and the stories you tend to tell yourself. We all do it. She is a brilliant business coach. And we will find out how brilliant she is because this is the first time I am having a coach come onto my podcast. So it's quite possible that she will want to use her techniques to uh, guide me to be a better dictator. Tell you, I am so happy, genuinely happy to have you here, looking beautiful as ever, smiling, 
how have you been? Because I haven't seen you for well over a year. And people use the pandemic. We've just been very busy. We never even saw each other even before the pandemic. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> Thanks for that wonderful introduction. Your people are good. I could just about remember writing that. And I was like, wow, wow. Your people have really researched. Oh my gosh, I am amazed. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 are, they are getting better. There was a time they, 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 they mistook someone for another person and I was reading someone else's profile. It was terrible. It was really, so they've got, they've got, <laughs> they have got better. They have got better. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. So how have you been? What's been happening to you? Where do I've you been good. Been? I've been busy. I've been busy working on a program that is going to come out in the next month and it's for entrepreneurs and freelancers. So I'm just working on that at the moment. I've been doing a lot of videoing for it and um, preparing all the modules for the course that is coming out. And um, I've also been commissioned by a traditional publisher to write another book. So when you're writing a book because somebody's commissioned you, it's not like you're writing a book that you self-published. So um, yeah, <laughs> I've got to stick to like tight deadlines and you know i haven't got all the time in the world so but that's really exciting and i'm really glad for that opportunity okay let's start with the coaching what made you go into coaching because it wasn't something i thought i thought you would be in you know uh, like a theater director or you know you know or or you know you know what i mean in the arts not coaching not not entrepreneurship what what made what happened what triggered you because it's, what, <laughs> okay what excuse you? me oh, my eyes water in a bit yeah um well uh well it's my quest to h-o-p-e hope when i say hope i don't mean sitting at home with your feet up watching netflix no helping other people evolve and that has been my mission for a very long time so when you met me i was a spoken word artist and also performer and um, it's still something that I will go back to, but I have a burning desire to help people live their best lives now. And that is so important. And how I found out that that was more important than anything else that I was doing at the time was the fact that as I was doing my um, performance work, I was also working as an IT consultant. And being an IT consultant is a very lucrative career. But um, I found myself working in lots of different organizations, sometimes six months, sometimes more. And I got involved in things that I didn't need to get involved in. I worked in a lot of law firms, a lot of financial institutions, and I got involved a lot in their corp um, corporate responsibility work, their pro bono work, helping um, the homeless, did interview workshops for the homeless, um, going into primary schools, helping children to read. And I wasn't getting paid for any of that but I was getting a big payment as a consultant, but I was more interested in the other things. So that's what made me become a coach. I did a coaching diploma many years before that, then spoke to somebody that said, oh, you need to be good at marketing to be a coach. And so from that day, I decided not to be a coach. And so I ended up coming back to it 10 years later because I discovered that that really was my true calling, helping people get out of the rut that they're in or helping people to move forward. So that's when, uh, why I came into it. I think um, there was a transformation moment when I was helping another coach who's like, um, she's been coaching for probably 30 years. Um, and I was like helping her out at her events. And there was an exercise that she did with the people that signed up for her seminar. And I was giving out leaflets and about to sit down, wait for everyone to finish. And I decided to take that exercise. And after doing that exercise, what it actually opened up for, for me is experiences, really, really like bad experiences that I've been through and overcome. But because of the place that I was at the time, I took it for granted. So at that time I was earning thousands of pounds a week and almost forgot about the two times when I was almost um, bankrupt and dejected and the 24 pence bread. So in that exercise while I was writing, that came out. And then she called out for people to talk about their experiences. I came out and what I noticed that everybody in the audience was taking notes. 
And then she said, oh, something, something, would you buy this woman's blah, blah. I wasn't selling anything. I wasn't a coach then. And like all these people had their hands up. And then when it got to the break, there was a queue of people waiting to speak to me and tell me their life story. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And the impacts that I had on all those people is what made me decide to be a coach and like start getting qualifications again around the coaching. Amazing. That is the story. Wow, that is that is such a beautiful story. I'm interested in what what do you think you did that made them respond that way to you? Because obviously it's not something, do you know? I don't know. Because I don't even know exactly what I said. All I could see is people taking notes. And the person that I brought there to like help out this lady as well is somebody that I know. She was taking notes as well. She had a notebook and she had pages of notes. And I can't even remember what I said. I can't remember. I think maybe it's just like being authentic, being honest. A lot of people that are trying to help people, some of them are not coming from a place where, you know, I'm not perfect. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've overcome this. Some of them are coming from a place that if you want to be this, you got to do this. If you want to be that, you got to do that. But you don't hear what has happened to them. And sometimes people see them as gods and gurus, not as, you know, just normal everyday people going through normal everyday experiences that they did not let bring them down to the bottom. So you, you, reckon, you reckon it's about authenticity and, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and just being genuine, being, being genuine rather than, yeah, this is really interesting. Yeah. So because people want to know that you've been through what they've been through. And mm -hmm. um, I think if you've been through it, then you actually have felt it. Yeah. And I, th I think that that's what um, brings a lot of people okay. to me. So are you a business coach, life coach, or are you a combination of both? So um, I think life coach doesn't really define what you really do. So I would say career, business and mindset. Okay. Okay. Talk to me about mindset because you hear that a lot. The people need to change their mindset and not many people understand that. And also I do because yeah. I have had challenges as well where mm -hmm. it takes a while before you you understand what you need to do to change your mindset. And I, you know, my view is that people just are in a rut for one reason or the other. And they need, they need that, they need someone to, 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 to show them how to make that leap. What is your, what is, what is mindset? Because we, I hear all this big, big grammar mindset. What is it? <laughs> mindset is about how you think based on what you believe, okay? How you set your mind is so important. Now, there's lots of different types of mindsets, but there's two main ones, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So somebody with a fixed mindset might look at um, their life and think, well, nobody in my family has been to university. Nobody in my family has done anything but a shop job. So I don't think that I can do that. Or um, it could be a young person thinking, well, you know, I know somebody that wants to be a doctor, but I don't think that I could ever be a doctor because I'm not good at this and I'm not good at that. And they're not thinking about, okay, I can learn to be this. I can learn to be that. Nothing is set in stone. If you want something, you just need to go through the steps in order to achieve it. And don't let your past determine your future. So a growth mindset is somebody that says, okay, um, I've, I've done something, um, I've not achieved this. Um, I'm gonna take constructive criticism. I'm gonna learn and move forward. I'm, I'm not looking at failure as failure. I'm looking at failure as a lesson. I'm looking at a rejection at, as something to make me reflect. Maybe there might be something that I need to change and then move on. So a uh, growth mindset, so it's more looking um, somebody that is positive. Now, a fixed mindset also feels that, you know, they're not valid unless out external forces, forces outside of themselves, other people think that they're great. 
So, you know, it could be somebody posts something on social media that they think is great, but they only get one like. So they start to think, oh, well, if only one person likes it, maybe it's not good. But we don't need validation from other people. Now, is that, so you don't need validation from, from other people. Okay, I, I, I understand that. Is there um, a difference in terms of, because you and I are what we call British Nigerians. So we have spent time in Nigeria, we've spent time in Britain. Is it easier for you to change? It doesn't matter where you are in terms of your location. You can change your mindset. It doesn't matter what your environment is like. That's no, because, okay. you know, I wouldn't say that one type, when, when we're looking at those two types, I wouldn't say one type is British, one type is Nigerian, not at all. It's about the individual and how they think. Yeah. There's so many people in Nigeria with a growth mindset. Mm -hmm. There's so many people in this country with a fixed mindset. So it's got nothing to do with your environment. It's about how you think and what drives your perception. Okay. So for example, now, um in my coaching one of the first things i do with clients is to work out you know what they're leaning towards okay so some are leaning more towards a fixed mindset some are leaning more towards a growth mindset so i do ask them a few questions that they answer and that i can tell and one of the questions that everybody thinks is to do with a growth mindset is actually to do with a fixed mindset so one of them is they just have to give a score of one to 10. And one of them says, I feel great when I can do things that other people can't do. So most of people naturally will give us a high score to that. But yeah. that is actually a fixed mindset because we should feel great anyway, whether we can and we shouldn't be competing with anybody. We should compete in, be competing with whoever we were yesterday, mm. not the next person. We should draw allies with people and people in the same industry as us, people, you know, doing the same thing and mm. draw allies with them. Okay. I'll ask that question again because what I am trying to establish yeah. is that it also depends on how you've been brought up, isn't it? So they, your parents instill certain values and, and cultures on you. And so you, you could, is it possible to have a mindset, a fixed mindset for 30 years and then, or 40 years and then all of a sudden you see the light and you, you want to change? Yeah, you can change and you can have a fixed and growth mindset in lots of different areas of your mm. life. I really don't think that definitely how your upbringing can affect that but i don't think the country because every one in the country has different life experience they have parents with different life experiences mm -hmm. so i don't think it's anything to do with the country that you're living in okay. per se i think it's to do it has a lot to do with socialization and what you've been seeing experiencing and feeling as you're growing up mm. but you some people might have a fixed mindset when it comes to business okay so i was doing a workshop with um a number of people and i asked them showed some people on the screen and and showed them their careers and said what do they think now a manager could have a fixed mindset so he might have staff that are doing really well and he might have staff that are not doing really well so now if he's got money to spend on training, he's probably going to think, well, the people that are doing well, I'm going to train them because I know that they're going to probably give me a return on investment. Mm -hmm. And the people that are not doing well, he might say, well, these people are not doing well, I might get rid of them soon. Now that's a fixed mindset because had those people that are not doing well had support and training, they might be doing well. You can't put people in a box according to how you're seeing them now. Mm. you know see mm. their potential mm. so and in that same manager at home with his family and friends he could be a totally different person so you can have fixed mindset in one area a growth mindset in another but i will say i don't think it has anything to do with what country you're in or what country you were brought up in i was born and raised um over here by Nigerian parents, raised by Nigerian parents, 
parents who always instilled in me, try your best. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Mm. Um, and they instilled a, from that, that gave me a fixed mindset. I, I always went through life thinking I'm the best and there's nothing that I can't do. And that's because of my parents. I'm gonna give you an example, which I know people, a lot of people struggle. And you, I think you've mentioned it from what my people have said. That transformation from working nine to five to wanting to run your own business. Talk me through how you change your mindset to be able yeah, to do that. It's not easy because the automatic thing that you think at first is, I am secure in my place of employment. Why would, if it, you know, you've heard that terminology, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Because some people are in a job, they're secure in that job, they're very happy. But then some people feel unfulfilled, so they want to venture out and do something that by themselves, which is perfectly fine. Some people just want to do a side hustle. Some people actually want to go and own their own business. So what most people do is start their business part-time while they're working full-time, eventually start growing their business to it gets to a point where their business is giving them more money than their employment. Mm -hmm. So they transition that way. Some people, they start their business, they're still employed, and they're worried about what's going to happen if they jump ship. And so because they're worried about that, and sometimes we make things happen by our thoughts. So they're not thinking positive thoughts. You need to think positively. And if something is not happening, then there's a reason. Now, I've made the mistake many times in business. So I've been in business from the age of 18, doing little bits of different things, mm -hmm. buying clothes and reselling them, all sorts of things. So now one mistake that I made in business is just, I don't know, just thinking things will magically happen. Clients will just fall from the air. And, and then I wasn't putting anything into that business financially. I wasn't putting in any hard work, but I was disgruntled that things weren't happening. So that's a mistake that I made a very long time ago. And often people do that. Now, sometimes people are scared to advertise because they think, okay, what if I spend all this money on advertising and it doesn't work? What if, what if, what if, what if it does? So they, they, you need a, um, a marketing strategy, an advertising strategy. You need to be looking at, okay, what is actually bringing me um, business? What isn't bringing me business? What is working? What is not working? Okay, Facebook advertising seems to be better than LinkedIn or um, me uh, listing my services on board seem to be coming through. So you need to be tracking and analyzing, but you also need to just go for it. If you really want to do it, go for it, put everything into it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And you just, it's not easy. You've just got to keep trying, but don't be afraid. A lot of people are afraid to jump. And I'm thinking if you don't try, you will never know whether you would have succeeded or not. It's better to have tried and have failed, which is not really failure, it's a lesson to have not tried at all. I think the biggest risk that you can make is standing still and doing nothing. Why, why, do you, why do you think people are afraid? I hear that a lot about fear, the, what you call the fear factor. What makes people afraid? Different people are afraid of different things. Like in my book, I talk about a lot of things that stop people from doing what they're doing. Sometimes they're afraid of failure. They're thinking, well, if I am fail, I'm going to make embarrass myself. Everybody's going to know. I'm just going to look foolish. Sometimes they're afraid of success. They think that if they're successful, the same friends and colleagues and peers that loved them before is going to be jealous of them and not like them anymore. Or they think that, well, when I'm successful now, I'm living up to a different um, a route, um, a different tape is gonna be used to measure mm -hmm. me. And um, I might um, fail because I've become successful and mm -hmm. now much more is expected of me. Mm -hmm. And I think people are afraid of being, not having enough money. And they feel that, you know, whatever job they're doing is their security blanket. And I personally feel that it's not a security blanket if it's keeping you in a prison. 
if it's keeping you stuck, if it's, it's not allowing you to express yourself to your full capability, if it's not allowing you, if it's not, if it's not giving you the food and the fuel that you need in your life, then you need to rethink that situation. And the pandemic has shown us that no job is secure. Look at those people that were furloughed and let go. So mm. now people are realizing your job is not your source. Mm. There's good things about the job. You can learn about the job and then go and start your own business and, you know, do better. Mm. But your job is not your source. And there's no such thing as job security. And there never has been. But people thought there that was. there. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Um, yeah, so we've, we've tackled the, the mindset and I hope that my listeners, wherever you are in the world, you've learned about growth mindset and fixed mindset and what you need to do to change your mindset. Um, I certainly want to change my mindset uh, after being a fictional leader of a country for so long. I genuinely want to become leader of, of a real country, but you know, that is something that, I didn't, I didn't realize it was fictional. Sorry. Well, let's move on. Oh. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Let's talk about, let's talk about books. Cause uh, I know you've written, how many books have you written right now? Well, I've written one book and I'm um, writing two at the moment. Okay. Tell me about the first book that you've written. The first book is called How to Get Paid More Than Your Boss, Seven Strategic Steps to Secure That Dream Job. It's that simple. It's that simple, yes. And it, it's more than just a book about finding a job. It's much more than that. So it deals with mindset. It deals with blockers and how to unblock them. It deals with the stories that we tell them ourselves. I can't do this because of this. I'm too fat. I'm too thin. I'm too old. I'm too young. Um, all these sorts of things. So it deals with how how to deal with that and eradicate. It deals with the big M, which is money. People think that money is um, the problem, but money is not the problem. So people say, oh, I can't do this because I don't have enough money. And when they do have enough money, they still don't do it. I'm a victim of that. Yeah. So um, it deals with money mindset. It deals with looking at achieving whatever you want to achieve and not looking at money as such a big deal because it's not. Um, it's just one resource out of many that we would need for different things. And if, if we we don't know where uh, we need to go somewhere, we don't have the address, we just get the address and go. We don't sit there for five years saying, I don't have the address, I don't have the address. Yeah. So that's that, that's my attitude to money. <laughs> I, I, I would challenge you that money is important. It is important, yeah, but it's not as important as we think. But, okay, give me, give me an example. You, you need money to right. run a business. <laughs> You need money to run a business. So if you don't have the money, do you not run the business or do you go and find that money? Tell me. Do you go and find the money or do you? Find the money. Yeah, there's money out find. there for you. There's grants, there's loans, but forget about loans, okay? Let's look at the grants that are available. In the book, I mention websites that you can go and get these grants. There is a grant for everything that you can imagine that you want to do. If you want to save blind dogs in Madagascar, there's a grant somewhere for that. So one of the places is Funding Finder. So go to fundingfinder.co.uk and just get your money that you need for your next project. Go get it now. It's waiting for you. Funding Finder. And yes. you, can, you, you can use that Funding Finder for anything. You can use it. There's funding for everything. So after you've gone on there, come back and tell me why you can't start your business. That is interesting. So what I am picking up from you is that part of what you need to do in order for you to make that leap from nine to five to, uh, or in terms of your book, how to get paid more. And it's really about you being self-employed and running your own business is you also That's have to- that's one of the ways because like the one of the reasons why even though my editor said I should change the title and not make it how to get paid more than your boss because she felt that that wasn't possible and I said well it's been possible for me many times so um in 1990 was it 1999 no 
I can't remember, but anyway, probably 99 or 2000. So I was walking down the street and I got headhunted. So in two weeks, I got paid more than my boss and my boss's boss. So I got headhunted, tripled my salary, was on a free, uh, but it was on a six figure income. Okay, so I got paid more than my boss and um, other people can get paid more than their boss in various ways. So one of the ways is being a consultant. That's just one of many ways. But the point, I, some... the point I wanted to make was that, you know, so for example, not everybody knows about this findingfunder.com. That's what they need to buy the book. Yes, yes. So you you also need to acquire knowledge, don't you? You need to, you of need to get Naturally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Okay, cool. Yeah, so um, it's just like, it's a transition. So you don't need to do it in one big jump. You can take baby steps. So you find out um, what you need and how much experience you need to be a consultant in whatever field you are in. For me, it was IT. Somebody might be in a, a different field. So find out what you need to be a consultant. As a consultant, you will be earning much more. I had a friend that was a, um, working for TFL as a, what did he do now? I can't remember. I think it was something to do with logistics, infrastructure. Anyway, he was working for TFL and on a, just an average salary. And he saw people in there that came in as a consultants and he knew that they were on more than four times his salary. So he said to somebody, so, so what, what are they doing? You know, they're doing the same thing as me. How come they're on so much money? And he said, oh, they're consultants. And at the time he didn't know what a consultant was. So it would take a few years now. He left and he became a consultant for another company and works his way up, 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 worked for different companies. Then he came back to TFL to the same job that he was doing as a consultant, his colleagues after, I think it was 10 or 15 years, I'm not sure, his colleagues were still there on, you know, that same salary or maybe a thousand more. Mm. And he came back as a consultant in the place where he worked, which was awesome. So tell me if he wasn't earning more than his boss, but it, it, it's a metaphor and it's also a reality. Mm. That, that's so, really, really interesting. It's really possible, it's possible. And it's, it's about trying to achieve more. Now, I don't think that money is the most important thing in life, because I think that what is more important than how much you make is how you make people feel. Mm. OK, so I don't want to be misconstrued. I'm not all about money and I'm all about people and helping people. Mm. But it's important. We need money in order to survive. Mm. To survive, money is not evil. Um, we need money. So, but if you want to make more money, there's ways that you can make money and it's up to you what you do with your money. So for me, um, making more money has allowed me to be even more generous. It's allowed me to give to whatever he causes. It's allowed me to help out in um, Baton Rouge where they've experienced floods and lots of other things. And it's, it's allowed me to just give somebody a large sum of money to, to rebuild their house, which was they only had the shell left. And I, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't making more money. It's allowed me to give to worthy causes and charities. I'm a trustee of a charity that builds schools in Rwanda for orphans. And I give, to, as well as being a trustee, I also give to that charity. And um, yeah, we, we need money. And, um, but we also need to appreciate the people around us and realize that money is not a big a deal as we think it is when it comes to letting it stop us from doing something. So there's OPM. So when I mentioned grants and loans as part of OPM, other people's money using that to do what we need to do. Talk to me about other bits of the book. So we've established a bit about money. Right. And I'm going to let you know who this book is for. Yes. So from the title, you might think it's just for workers. So I'm just going to let you know who the book is for. And at the front of the book, there's a poem called Who is this book for? So this book was carefully written and crafted for you and the person looking over the reader's shoulder, you too. So you can discover your real self 
hiding behind your current situation, quietly putting up with the workplace bureaucracy, trials and tribulations, and gain the type of confidence that will set you apart and stand you in good stead if you are ready to start achieving even your most exceptional, extraordinary and ambitious goals. So your present may be a thing of the past, flee from those mundane roles. A book for those who want to scream but are too afraid to shout, who want incredibly more than what life has currently dished out, willing to take the necessary steps to make dreams reality, no longer wanting to stay stagnant, seeking a new normality. This book is for you if you're trapped in a dead end job. If Monday mornings make you pull a sickie to avoid sitting next to Bob. If every day is unscrupulous as you're constantly undermined. Do nothing, stay where you are or rise from the grueling grind. For you, if you're a highly paid expert seeking to diversify, for you, if you're near the top, but every promotion passes you by. For you, if you're an entrepreneur seeking additional income without strife, this book is for those who are tired of being a mere pawn on the chessboard of life. Wow. Wow, that is really powerful. And it's really powerful on, on many fronts because not only do I identify with what you're saying, I, you know, I know you because you do poetry, you know, so I can see the, the artistic side of you. I mean, Thank well, so I never know. I don't know whether you still do poetry, but that is well, aware or well, I don't know whether when you launched the book, whether you were able to do that. But that was just really powerful. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. So, yeah, so part, part one of the book deals with money mindset, mindset, things that are blocking you. Part two deals with actually finding that job. And it gives away some secrets, some secrets of my success It's put in the book and it's worked. So I did a group workshop based around that book uh, for how long was that? I think it was for yeah, six weeks. And in six weeks, all of the people that were looking for jobs got jobs. So there's secrets in that part too. And there's places where I tell people to look where you wouldn't think. And people tried that and it worked. And then part three is about beyond the job, how to make more money outside of the job. And I give you 50, 50 ways that you can make money without a job and also how to start to execute. And that's part three of the book. Wow. How much is your book? My book is a mere $14.99. It's on Amazon. So just search for Ted You Chosen on Amazon or search for How to Get Paid More Than Your Boss or the dictator will put the link in the, I don't know whether it's chat or whatever you call it on YouTube, but I think it's still called a chat. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we'll put it. We'll put it as part of the description. <laughs> you see, you have, to you have to change your mindset about YouTube. You have to change your mindset. Yes, I do. <laughs> And I'm going to start from today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But look, it's been, it's been really interesting talking to you. And, yeah, I'm really, Great. I, I'm I can't really, remember I, the last time I've spoke to a dictator. But look, I'm really proud of your achievements, honestly, because, uh, you know, one of the, 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 you're absolutely right about the pandemic, because a lot of people faced a lot of challenges from losing their jobs to losing their loved ones to a change in lifestyle. And yeah. human beings are so hard on themselves. You know, I was talking to someone uh, a few days ago who always mm -hmm. kept comparing himself to how others were doing. And that was really getting him down. So I said mm -hmm. to him, where were you 10 years ago? And where are you now? Surely you should be competing with yourself or you're comparing yourself. Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, wow. Actually, I have made a lot of progress over the last 10 years just looking at myself and where my life is, rather than looking at myself with someone else. That because we all have different parts. So, uh, I, I, but, I, but I, I, did, I didn't know that. I, that was just something that came 
popped up from my head, you know, as a way of just trying to inspire him to look at where he is now and where he was 10 years ago. But you have confirmed it as a as a professional coach, which is which is really, really great. Yeah, you should just compare yourself with yourself and well done for you helping that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now this this is the thing, because I have just recently discovered a place called Clubhouse. You know, yes. because my people said, Oh, president, you need to be on Clubhouse because there are no yeah. world, there are no world leaders in Clubhouse. And uh, no. it's been fascinating, Ted, to be on Clubhouse because obviously, as you know, it's a another social media platform, but really more about helping and evolving people. And I have met more people in there. They're not they're not professional coaches. But they give you advice, as you know. They just give you advice of anything yeah, you require. Right. It's, it's, just, it's a lovely environment. Yeah. So what I don't seem to understand is why is that happening in a social media platform, but not necessarily happening outside the social in, in the real world? Okay. Let me explain. It's not that it doesn't happen in the real world because if we don't see something, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. So for example, if a tree falls and nobody's around to hear it, has the tree fallen? Yes, it has. So it does happen, but we don't really see it happen. So sometimes it happens in small networks. Um, okay, like let's say many years ago, I used to go to a lot of property networking events and mm -hmm. it was awesome, you know, mixing with, as somebody just starting out, mixing with people that were millionaires, property millionaires, and everybody was so helpful with advice. There's one particular millionaire that I could call today with any question or problem, and he'll be there to help me. So it does happen outside of the clubhouse and it has been happening for many years. But what has happened recently is um, people have, um, I don't know, I think sometimes people when they uh, reach a certain level they don't want to come down from that level. So they don't want to be too open or too free with information, especially if they feel that somebody is not on their level. And I feel that we are all born human. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that anyone should really think that they're above other people. And I think with Clubhouse, um, it's not the first type of social media that deals with voice. It's probably maybe the fifth or the sixth. So I've been on others. Now, what I've noticed is because you don't see the people and you're just speaking and you're just listening, people feel freer, they feel more open. So whereas maybe if they were face to face and they were seeing people face to face, they might have felt a bit vulnerable saying, hey, my business is failing, I need help. Or, hey, you know what, I have just qualified as a coach and I don't know what to do when I get my first client I'm so scared so because they're not seeing people face to face and they think you know what if it doesn't matter because these people don't know me some people feel and I can really understand that some people feel more comfortable telling their problems or issues to strangers and then those strangers feel comfortable you know just giving out information and I think the um, the voice social media is very different from your Facebook and your Twitter and your LinkedIn. So definitely, I think a lot of people see Twitter as a place where people pretend to be somebody else. Mm. And um, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen on Clubhouse. It probably doesn't happen as much as it does on other social media. But I find on Clubhouse, people are more open and more open to being vulnerable. Um, and I think that is the difference, but I think it definitely does. And I've experienced it happening outside um, on many occasions, but I think Clubhouse has so much potential. And um, there's, there's, there's lots of others where people speak a lot about mental health, which I think is really important. And I think what these platforms do that allow that work with voice it allows you know somebody could live by themselves and because of the pandemic during lockdown they're just isolated and it gives them opportunity to speak to people and make new friends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also get advice on business so when um i was one of the early adopters of clubhouse 
um, as a iPhone user. So I got advice on business. I needed, had some questions with regard to trademarking things that I was coming out with. Um, I sold books on Clubhouse as well. Um, I practiced pitching up and it was just, you know, lots of things. So I, I got a lot of value. I gave a lot of value for a few months. I ran a room based around the title of my book, how to get paid more than your boss. So people at work and business owners came on to ask questions. And some people were like a bit worried about transitioning to taking their business online when um, it's always been face to face. But some businesses can still, you know, strive and survive online. Look, Tejo, it's been it has been really fantastic uh, talking to you. I, it's been I, I, look, I am genuinely very, very happy for the progress that you have made in your life. Thank you. You you are a different Tejo. And, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the better, for the better. I'm not saying for oh, the better. Thank you. Uh, for the better. <laughs> not that there was any, not that there was anything wrong with you, but just you know okay. what I mean. You know, just in terms of, yeah. you know, just your the, the whole advice you're giving about, you know, making that leap, you know, embracing, changing your mindset, and you know, you and I need to talk after after this. Uh, after this. Fine. What yeah. what are, what what are the exciting projects coming up? in the future well you know what this is exciting but scary i'll tell you this so um i'm working on my book that's not scary yeah my um poetry book and it's poems that i've written over 30 years all coming out and um i was headhunted by a traditional publisher that asked me to write a book first of all i've just thought they wanted me to write an article and i think oh they've read my articles they like them and then i found it was they actually wanted me to write a book so I've agreed to it. I've sent them the proposal that they've asked for. I've signed the contract. And um, yeah, so now it's scary because it's not like I'm doing it in my own time. I'm doing it in their time. So on, I know it's going to be like fine and fantastic, but it's a little bit scary because it's something that, you know, I've never done before writing a book for a publisher, you know, being commissioned to write a book. So that's really exciting, you know, and it's really exciting that I didn't find them, they found me. And I think that's amazing. So, and that is proof of what I was saying, that, you know, you, you're doing well, you're doing well. Uh, Thank you. I, I, I'm just a bit disappointed. I, I'm just disappointed that you have said that you were sponsoring uh, uh, Rwanda and all these other African countries and you've done nothing, nothing for Laughter Republic. I will send you oh. my paper because my people, no. my people, my people also need, we need help in my country. I understand that, but you know I've been helping um, Laughter Republic for years, you know that as an advocate and um, yeah, so you, you know that I, I've, I've put so much in to your country, you know that. Don't forget, don't well, forget. Like, like what, like what? Oh my gosh, do we need to go over it now? You know, you know the British, you know the British government have stopped foreign aid to to countries like Latvia Republic, Nambia, Wakanda, right. and the Zola. Okay. Right. You know, they, 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 anyway, we, we, would, we would we would we would talk. We would talk. Through my PA, just send a request through my PA, let me know your needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I will send my PayPal. PayPal struck President of Anjou who would cover everything. Okay. But we will we, we will talk. You have Cash App. Yeah, because uh, I use Cash App on PayPal. I never heard of Cash App. I don't, you know, you can Oh you, right. It's like WhatsApp. Can you can you can, you can you can you imagine a dictator on Cash App? Can you imagine? Yeah, I can. <laughs> Cash App is like WhatsApp, but it's for sending money. It's for uh, sending and receiving uh, money. Uh, okay, cool. To the UK and um to America. So you know, if you have like um, any of your people in the UK or America, I can send through cash up to them and okay. then they can okay. put it on. Okay. Okay. Uh, so any final thoughts? Any final thoughts before I go on? I've got to yeah, some buy time. the book. Uh, buy, buy the book. Buy yeah. the book. <laughs> okay. And the book can be no. found. The book can be found on Amazon and it's £4.99. 14 dollars 99 14 99 Okay. That, yeah. yeah. So and this up. is a book that can really change your life. It really can. And if you find that it's it's a great investment, but you can always read um, the first three 
Um, I'm not sure how much they show on Amazon for free, but there's a little bit on Amazon for free. Mm. You can also get the ebook as well. And it's a workbook as well. So, you know, lots of things to write in there. And I just want to say that, you know, whatever you want that you feel is out of your reach is not really out of your reach. Okay. Look, take and, your um, don't settle for less. Look, it's been fantastic. As you know, I have lots of children. I'm very conscious of the fact that today is Father's Day. So I really want I know, to go spend, go and spend some time with them. Yeah, so, and I'm sure your 10 children want to take you out. Yeah, well, where, 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 where can they take me to that I haven't been to already? We're just going to stay in my presidential palace, have a few goods and, uh, and everything else. You're welcome to come and join us. How's your lovely husband, by the way? I didn't oh, it's just his birthday today, so we're taking her out. We've got a restaurant booked. Okay, please social distancing. Yeah, of course, naturally. Naturally. Look, Tedjo, it's been husband, fun. I'm, it's been great. Say hello to your wives and your 10 kids. Thank you very much. And say hello to your only husband. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this uh, podcast. It, I found it extremely useful. Lots of tips about coaching, business coaching, changing your mindset, how there are people out there who are prepared to help you and involve you and, and make you grow personally. And like for me, the key thing is don't be stagnant. Don't be afraid. Seize the opportunity because you only have one life. And if, if people that you look up to can do it, because they're not different from us, they're just human beings, human beings who know what they're doing, have improved their knowledge and are surrounded by people who are prepared to help them. And I do believe that every human being deserves success, deserves growth, personal growth. So if there's anything in particular that you've heard today, then please uh, go and find out, research on it. It's really, really important. You can find Teju's book on amazing. I, I used to call it Amazon. Now it is amazing. Uh, <laughs> well, it's actually amazing. And I will post the link on my YouTube account. And when I publish this audio, I will make sure the link is there as well. And you can find Ted, you can just Google, just Google her, you will find Ted yeah. Chosen. I'll put the link in the yeah. chat for you. Yeah, and, I mean, um, our, website, our website is tedchosen.co.uk. And once again, I am very, very elated. And I have to say that I believe I also changed my mindset by filming that video a couple of weeks ago. I just went viral. I saw the opportunity. Awesome. There was I nothing. Am so happy for you. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I'm in on dated. I'm in on dated. You know, I'm a viral star now. A viral. So you, you know, viral, viral star. You know, how many presidents awesome. are viral star apart from Trump? Exactly. Hey. Oh. <laughs> anyway, thank you. You take care of yourself. Be good. Take care. Take See care. you soon. Bye. Bye.